Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 11th. This first article was sent in by my friend Robert Bangalore Bobble. This is from the Stanford News. Aluminum battery from Stanford offers safe alternative to conventional batteries. I'll just read the first part of the article. Stanford University scientists have invented the first high-performance aluminum battery that's fast charging, long-lasting, and inexpensive. Researchers say the new technology offers a safe alternative to many commercial batteries in wide use today. It has always been kind of like the holy grail to try to get an aluminum battery to save on the weight and uh, also because of the fact that it's uh, low flammability. If you've heard the stories, there have been a lot of horror stories on the news about lithium batteries catching on fire and some airlines will not allow uh, bulk shipments of lithium batteries on passenger planes. They have to go on cargo planes or be shipped over ground. Well, this material, and they even did tests on it and drilled through the battery, um, and it just does not catch on fire just because of the way it's designed. The one thing that's the disadvantage still, though, they've, they've overcome some of the things about uh, charging. It used to be not easily recharged very many times, maybe 100 times maximum, and they've got that licked. And uh, a lot of the other problems, too, finding the proper cathode. They found the proper cathode to go with the aluminum batteries. But the one thing they still have been having a little bit trouble with to where it's going to keep it from market until they can get this taken care of is the fact that it just does not, for the size, produce the same amount of voltage as a lithium battery. So in other words, if they made it the same size as your battery, like in your laptop, it would only produce half the voltage. So still they need to work on that. But, uh, yeah, getting closer and closer. And next up, this is from my friend Tamas, also known as Harley in Taiwan Tamas. A pill melts away common form of leukemia. And this is not one of those. I, I hate those people that post on Facebook these miracle cures like drink uh, broccoli juice and all of a sudden it's going to cure your cancer. This uh, sounds to be very legit because it's from a regular institution. This is from the Wild Cornell Medical College. Use of a twice-daily pill could turn a deadly blood cancer into a highly treatable disease, according to scientists at Weill Cornell Medical College. And this is to treat chronic lymphatic leukemia, or in other words, uh, blood cancer. What they will do, instead of subjecting the patients to chemotherapy, which if you read the description of how they have to do this, they have to do it multiple times, and it's a very painful, very uh, uh, just difficult process for the patients to have to endure. By taking these pills, they can treat it more as a chronic disease, so it does not necessarily <clears throat> excuse me, get the cancer uh, totally gone, but it gets it to where your body can keep it keep it uh, keep the keep it kind of kind of fight it off, I guess you would say something like that. So treat it more like a chronic disease that you can just take this pill twice daily. And I will not even try to. Uh, it's like I'll, I'll spell it out. This chemical that they're talking about is I D E L. A L I S I B I D E L L I S I B something like that. That's about the best I'm going to do in pronouncing it. But they did a double-blind study, and the cool thing about it is it proved so effective that um, they ended the study a little bit early and put the other people on the chemical too, because you know obviously if people's lives are in danger or they're having cancer or something like that, and you see something is very effective, you don't want to keep people taking a placebo or some other type of uh, lesser treatment that isn't as effective. So. Uh, uh, more and more it seems like, and, and I know for uh, family members and stuff like that that I've uh, seen, more and more cancer is not a uh, disease that's necessarily going to kill you anymore. It's a disease that can be conquered or at least uh, kept at bay, so I think that's always a good thing. This next one is from my friend Bob, 1954 Shadow. This is a Gizmodo article. A light bulb made using graphene will go on sale later this year. Basically, this is an LED light bulb that they add a little bit of a graphene to it and because they add the graphene which graphene is really hard to uh, make in large amounts but because this uh, LED type of bulb only needs a little bit of the graphene coating on it it causes these uh, LEDs to glow brighter it causes them to uh, use 10 percent less energy and they're also they become dimmable they think these light bulbs could go on sale by the end of this year for about 20 bucks a piece the bulb has been developed by a company called Graphene Lighting, of which Professor Colin Bailey, Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University of Manchester, is a director. People are amazed at just how quickly we managed to take it to market. Sometimes it takes 20 years to get a new discovery out there. And this little part here, the light bulb shows that graphene products are becoming a reality just a little more than a decade after it was first isolated. A very short time in scientific terms. This is just the start. Our partners are looking at a range of exciting applications, all of which 
started right here in Manchester. So uh, light bulb technology has been very interesting. I notice now that you can even walk into your Home Depot and you can get replacement LED tubes that would replace the old fluorescent uh, two-foot and four-foot tubes and fixtures and stuff like that. You can just put an LED light bulb in and hopefully it'll last for 10 years or more. No more need of a, having to replace a ballast or even use a ballast. It just connects directly to the, the 110. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. And last up, this is from Navy Thomas 8, F-35 pilots to wear $400,000 helmets that can see through the plane. This is on the new uh, F-35 uh, fighters, the new fifth generation stealth fighters that are coming up. What they're going to do is combine this helmet with uh, cameras mounted on the outside of the uh, craft itself, of the uh, airplane itself, so that basically you'll just be, you'll look down and you'll see the camera view, so it'll be just like looking through the floor of the airplane. You'll have a, uh, maybe close to a full, almost spherical view of what's going on, so uh, yeah, being able to see around you as quick as possible and be able to uh, determine the situation always gives you a little bit advance in the um, in the world of uh, fighter, <coughs> excuse me, in the world of fighter aircraft. And uh, from the article here, I'll just read a little bit of the end of the article and then you can read the rest. The uh, F-35 is the Pentagon's most expensive weapons program with an estimated cost of nearly $400 billion and has been widely criticized for its price tag. The program aims to replace a wide range of existing aircraft for the U.S. and several partner countries. The F-35 is the world's only fifth-generation fighter jet, combining state-of-the-art stealth technology with highly advanced avionics and maneuverability. The first F-35 flew in 2006 and 42 have been produced so far. China and Russia are working on rival and some experts say superior aircraft. So I guess it's a uh, matter of uh, keeping up with them. I know there's been a lot of complaints especially of the one that the Marines want that has the uh, capability of vertical takeoff and landing. It is always difficult when you want a plane to try to do everything that it can possibly do. So I can see possibly maybe for some savings having that part of the program cut later but uh, the rest of it I, I hope it does work out. Uh, fairly good. I know they had a lot of problems with the uh, F-111 stealth fighters too and those things at first, but they turned out to be a pretty good aircraft uh, later on with some design changes and some modifications. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care everybody. I will catch you next week.